Hola, welcome back uh, to my channel, Clear Vision. And in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing a subtle but very damaging form of emotional abuse. The silent treatment, also otherwise known as stonewalling. And so I'm gonna explore what it is, why it's used, and how to cope with it. So let's dive in and have a look. So what is the silent treatment or stonewalling? It's a manipulative tactic where one person deliberately ignores another person to punish them, control them, or provoke a reaction. And it can actually cause significant emotional distress, including feelings of rejection, loneliness, and helplessness. Um, so this is gonna be quite a short video because this is on about one very, very focused aspect of uh, abusive cycles. Narcissists use this a lot, as do abusers, manipulators, and people trying to control and coerce you into feeling certain ways and behaving in certain ways. So this is part of why people use the uh, silent treatment or the stonewalling. Uh, like I said, there's various reasons. Uh, a lot of it's to do with gaining control. Some of it's to do with avoiding conflict, which can be, uh, what's the word? Which can be less, less of a manipulative tactic. It's like people are trying to avoid conflict, so they stonewall, so they go silent. Sometimes that's it, they may need processing time. So this is something to distinguish out. Um, it can, avoiding conflict can also be coercive. It doesn't always get things resolved, but sometimes it is that people need to step out. And sometimes this, this stonewalling is about expressing anger without the confrontation. And a lot of the time it gets people dangling. So it's like, it's it kind of, I, I'm sorry, what have I done? Why won't you talk to me? And again, this is kind of, evokes feelings of rejection and remorse and uh, because it's such a strong response to have, you know, this, this, I'm now no longer going to talk to you. And some people go as far as to turn their backs completely and, it's, and wander around like the house together as if you do not exist. So recognizing these patterns and triggers is really, really crucial. And common signs including, uh, common signs include avoiding eye contact, as we've said, refusing to speak, which is the obvious one, ignoring messages and calls after a disagreement um, or after an unmet expectation. The psychological impact of silent treatment or stonewalling is really harmful because it undermines trust, uh, communication. I mean, communication just stops. And, and emotional intimacy because now that, you know, it, it stonewall is exactly that. It, you are now, it's a stonewall, it's a brick wall. Boom, done. You cannot get anything from them. Uh, so the emotional intimacy also disappears. Uh, there was often no resolution to the conflict. It leads to increased anxiety in the person on the receiving end of it, uh, depression, uh, diminished self-esteem uh, as well can also happen. And like I said, you know, coming forward with tons of apologies, it can make people really go out of their minds, uh, you know, kind of pacing up and down the floor and trying to get something. It can, it can also lead to uh, sometimes from the so much frustration from the person on the receiving end of it that they then move towards like aggression and then sometimes the stonewalling can stop and then the dynamic changes and then they stand there and they say see look at what you've done look at look at this look at how you're behaving this is why I can't talk to you this is why we can't communicate this is why we can't have a relationship properly because look at how you get and so they're, they're now, now they're really manipulating the situation and it, it's gaslighting in effect. It's uh, because you can stand and go, yeah, hang on, you, you weren't talking to me. Oh, you weren't talking to me, you stonewalled me. And not a case of like, you just stopped talking for 10 minutes. I mean, this is, and said, you know, a healthy relationship is like, I need some time out I need, before this escalates. But stonewalling is this complete kind of like, blah, 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 you, 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 turn my back on you now and I'm not going to engage in any, uh, communication whatsoever. I'm not even going to acknowledge your existence. Therefore, manipulating you into certain behaviors. And then if those certain behaviors tip over into frustration, anger, and aggression, sometimes, then they can point the finger and justify their behavior. And then that's a further manipulation. That's literally twisting the fabric of reality in their favor to make you look bad. And this is where sometimes you need to take, really, really need to get some help and really, really need to take control of yourself and step back from the situation, realize what's happening. And sometimes we need to, 
we, we need this to happen one or two times or sometimes several times to then go and go, okay, I'm being stonewalled here. I know what happens next. So now I'm gonna walk away from this situation. That's a slight aside, going back on track. As I said, uh, silent treatment is harmful because it undermines trust, communication, emotion, communication emotional and emotional intimacy in relationships, which leads to the anxiety, depression, diminished self-esteem, and those things I mentioned. From a Gestalt perspective, this form of emotional manipulation disrupts the authentic flow of communication and hinders personal growth and self-aware, uh, and, um, sorry, self-awareness. So how to cope with it? Well, the, the silent treatment involves, uh, coping with silent treatment involves several steps. First, like I said a moment ago, stay calm, avoid reacting impulsively, and that's, it's a real challenge to do. Then try to communicate gently and assertively with the person giving, uh, who's giving you the silent treatment or the, uh, is stonewalling you, expressing a desire to resolve uh, the issue. Setting boundaries is also essential to protect yourself from repeated emotional manipulation. If direct communication fails, consider involving a neutral third party, a mediator like a therapist uh, or, or an actual mediator uh, or a trusted confidant to facilitate uh, a constructive conversation. There's also some practical strategies, which uh, coping strategies, as I've said, stay calm. I can't emphasize this enough. The importance of remaining calm and not reacting impulsively, not getting to the state of frustration and aggression, which is extremely hard to do if your anxiety is up, and this happens quite a lot. Self-reflect, basically reflect on your own behavior and your own contributions towards said stonewalling behavior if you've contributed to it at all. Maybe you have inadvertently and you didn't realize. Think about the reality of it. Did they call for time out? Is this actually stonewalling? Or have they just hit you with a whole load of blame and finger pointing and then turned around, um, either physically or metaphorically, um, and, and, sh and trapped you out? And what does trapping you out on the outside actually do to you? What, maybe even look into why this has this, you know, does this, pull on some trauma of yours from the past, perhaps. Um, is this a repeating pattern and you're getting triggered again? And so that again is the time to step back, re not react to it, give it space, and then talk about it calmly later on. Um, and if the pattern keeps repeating itself, then you really need to maybe consider actually leaving the relationship if the person is not going to change their behavior or does not want to acknowledge that their behavior is um, adverse and is affecting the relationship. Uh, again, if they are out to manipulate, coerce, control, maneuver you into certain positions and then use blame and devaluing and things like that to grind you down and wear you down, the best thing you can do is walk away from it. Um, th that is um, much easier said than done. So I hope that helps. That is a really, really brief overview and I'm probably going to address this one again at another point and take this even further. But until that time and until I see you again, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios. <laughs>